Okay, so now we're going to create a line that we're going to use to control, in fact, the direction of our stairs. And we're going to control with it not only the direction, but also the length and the position. So, um, the very first thing that we need to create is a line. So, press tab over here and just start typing in L, I, N. So, line. Okay. So this is the very first point. Now if we gonna take a look at it, and as you can see we see all these controls on top of it and they're actually obscuring now what we have. Um, well, first of all, let me just play a little bit around. You can see you can use this thing to control the direction of the line and you can also move this and I believe you can use these circles to make, to change length, etc. So, showing this, you have an idea what this line is going to be. But we're not going to use these controls. Uh, let's get back to our uh, default values by pressing undo. So, I have this very first line. Uh, I want to make sure that I get rid of this obscuring uh, part. Now, how can I do this? You can press escape and by pressing escape you just remove the uh, tool controller like again if you press enter you activate it again escape you deactivate now there's still something which is obscuring my view over here and that's this very big controller that you see now uh, well I'm going to change this um, but I'm not going to give too much explanation what it is uh, we're going to change the display properties of this whole window. Now, the display properties you can uh, you can uh, you can call them by pressing the shortcut D. And here you have like all kinds of uh, things to control. Now, over here, uh, I want to change right here switch off the origin gnomon. And from the moment that I do this, you see the whole thing disappears. So I'll save this as a default and like that it will be kept this way. So if we check now the line we should normally see something and I don't see anything over here. Okay, let's change this into a smooth wire like this. Well, the reason is because I'm actually working in an alpha version over here. This is something which is going to be fixed. Okay, so we see this line um, and let's adjust a few things. Uh, first, what I want to do, um, let us show how this line is in structure. So over here you on the side view you have this whole bar with all kinds of icons. Now if you wouldn't have something like that, it could be that you have a line like this and you can activate it like so by pressing on this simple line. Now what we're going to do is we're going to show the points of this and that's something on which you have all kinds of controls over here to activate those things. So this one is to show the points and as you can see now we see what these points are. A second thing that we need to know is what are the indices of the points, what are the point numbers. So by clicking this you see in the symbol you have the point together with the number. You see what number they have. So the thing that we're going to do now is we're going to group these points so that we can control this one and not this one. So go over here to this part again, press tab again and type in group. Group geometry, that's what we need. Connect it like that and right here we're gonna name it top point so that's the name of the node but if we want to change the group name we have to change it as well so let's call it top point and I'm gonna just give it a different name that we can see the difference so top point name now if you want to check whether this has happened uh, 
or whether something is working properly or whatever thing, you can always press middle mouse button on the node and this will return you with a lot of information over here. Now over here we can see one primitive groups, one primitive in top point name. So that's almost correct. This is almost what we need to have. Except for the fact that this is a primitive. And a primitive, well you can see this or you can compare this best to what you have in Maya uh, as being a polygon. It's a little bit more complex than that but let's keep it right now as being a polygon. So right now we've selected just this one line. So we want to change this to points. So change over here the entity to points. If you're gonna check over here it says I have two points in the top point name. Both of these. So if I activate this you can see both of these are there. So this is not what we want to have. Um, so we're gonna change this by changing the pattern and the pattern is something where you can set what you want to have. So in this case I want to have the pattern of one. Just this very one point. There are all kinds of different patterns. Patterns. These are also things that we're going to see later on. Just for now, just type in this value. So as you can see, changing the value over here changes which selection that you have. There was just one detail that I want to show you again. Is uh, over here with these nodes. There are also all kinds of symbols that you can activate and select. Now I'm not going to explain all of them, but I'm going to explain what these are. These are the ones that make it visible for you which part to select, as you can see. So these show different results. So over here we see the result of the line, and if we select the eye over here, we see the result of the line together with the grouping, as you can see over here. Now the next step that we want to do is we want to be able to manipulate the point over here. So we're going to add a transform node, a transform sub. So just put it over there and what I did again was pressing tab and typing transform. So that's always the same thing. We have this node over here and if I go over here and I activate it again by pressing enter, you see when I move, I move everything. And this is not what I want to have as a result. I want to move only that point. So you can do this by selecting over here which group that you want to use. So click over here and you will get a pull down menu. So top point name. This is the one that I'm going to use. Now if I move again, you see that I'm only adjusting this point. Up, down, forward, backward. Now this is something I don't like too much because uh, I'm moving over here a point which is in fact sitting over here. I want to be able to have my control exactly on the same spot. So this is something which you control over here with the pivot. So if we change this to 1, the y of 1, which is exactly the same length of the line, we're gonna get our controller up to this part. And like so, we now can control it properly, exactly the way that we want it to be. But um, this is still not very procedural, and I will explain to you why. So if you go over here, and for example, I change the size of our line, oh, I have to go over here. If we change the size of our line, instead of being 1, changing it to 2, so a much bigger line, then again we're going to be confronted with exactly the same problem. So if we do it this way we always have to manually change all those things and this is really one of the core important things of procedural modeling that we want to change. Is We want to have all the controls as automatic as possible. So I'm going to undo it until we get back to the line again, to the very first size. But what I'm going to change 
is how we're going to get this value over here and what I'm going to do is something simple we're going to make a connection between the value that we have over here and the value that we have over here so go to the line go to distance and right mouse button click over here and right here you can say copy parameters so click copy parameters and then go to this node and go to the pivot now you can paste this in many different ways you can paste copied values copied expressions, copied references, copied relative references and copied channels now we're mostly interested in both of these now first of all I'm going to show you paste copied references and as you see it creates a text expression and the text expression is doing the following it says channel and this expression means to read out a channel, specific channel and then you give up the path of that channel so right now this path is a path that you can see going from the top completely to this line so it starts with obj star line 1 and then distance as you can see parameter dist so this is a very big thing but also this over here is very rigid we don't want to have this and the reason is because uh, well that's something you will see later on also that sometimes we can change the position uh, where this is not position in space but position within grouping for example if I now would create uh, a box around it some kind like a folder by pressing shift C hang on uh, create a box and we see it's like that, create a box and we have a subnet and then you see that this is not correct anymore so we have stair, subnet, distance and normally seen it will complain about it not being able to uh, get the value well it's not complaining but anyways you see it's not working it's just sitting over there so if we undo the whole thing undo go back to the top and see this again there like that then it's working again now we're gonna change this um, instead of using a, a copied reference we're going to make a relative reference which is much more interesting and now it is relative meaning that it's always getting it information depending where this node itself is so what it does this time with these double points it says to get the channel I'm gonna go outside of this node outside of what I have over here and I'm going to look right here in this whole field so then I'm checking for line and then I'm connecting with this and so if this whole thing is going to be displaced to a whole different part or something much deeper into sub nets into subfolders then this thing is going to work uh, at all times so this is showing you a bit of difference now later on you're going to get uh, a more in detail in depth version of that but it gives you like a rough idea now the nice thing is uh, as we see over here if we change now the distance of this line you're gonna see that automatically the pivot has moved with it as well and this is really what we want to have so automatic change of pivot so that this works at all times exactly like we want it to be okay 
Now, there's also something else. Um, right now, you see the result over here uh, as an expression. Now, if you click on the name with the left mouse button, this changes into showing the result. So you can switch by left mouse button clicking, seeing either the expression or uh, the result of the expression. Okay, let's go back to line one. Set this value to one. Now, again, to show you what has happened, um, I'm going to display what extra connection has been made. So if you press D, that's also display option, same thing like we did over here. If you press D, we can go to dependency and show local dependency links. And as you can see now, we have a dependency link, what you have over here. So now we see that we have a connection from this part to this part. Switch is off again because it's sometimes more irritating than whatever. All right. Um, so now we're going to conclude by just moving this, let's say, to this side over here. Well, I'm going to type in the values minus one, zero. So this concludes it for this part. Uh, what you've seen right now is how to apply a second object, which is in this case a line. How to create groups in a very basic, simple way. So uh, by creating groups, how to create groups for points, how to create groups for uh, primitives. Um, you've seen also a little bit how to control the display properties, of which there are much more over here. And we see now how to manipulate a certain specific part of an object and also how to change the pivot point and how to use a very basic set of an expression already. So this concludes this part. Uh, now in the next part we're going to uh, change the structure over here by subdividing this into multiple parts and then making sure that we copy on each one of those points this box.